the focus of uh, my work on the depiction of indigenous peoples, First Nations, in early English and French travel writing has been on the ways in which uh, early uh, explorers and colonizers uh, saw indigenous leaders and how they understood the, the, the way that native societies were organized politically. And one of the things that I found fascinating was that um, in the 16th century, um, in the wake of um, um, Spanish colonization in the Caribbean and in Mesoamerica, Mexico, and uh, in uh, parts of South America, the Andes region, um, French and English colonizers uh, appropriated some of the vocabulary that this earlier Spanish colonizers had used to describe uh, indigenous uh, societies. And in principle, uh, or uh, in particular, um, they saw um, First Nations as being monarchies under the rule of kings. Uh, and since tendency was widespread, it wasn't, a un it wasn't universal. But uh, in many different places where English and French explorers and colonizers went, and this is everywhere from uh, the Arctic, uh, Frobisher's voyages uh, uh, in search of the Northwest Passage, uh, in, um, um, in Virginia, um, the French in Brazil, um, and to some degree also in Eastern Canada, in the St. Lawrence Valley. Um, French and English observers saw indigenous societies as, as monarchies, and they labeled their leaders as, as kings. And this was significant because um, if you understood a society as being organized in this way, it meant you had certain assumptions about how that society worked, how politics worked. Uh, it meant in particular that um, uh, colonizers wanted to deal with the person they saw as the king. Um, that's you know, obviously the most important person in a monarchy, and making the deal with the king or an arrangement with the king was a, uh, an excellent way to sort of you know, establish political relationship. It also was a mechanism for establishing colonial control. Um, one way to absorb new lands within a, an expanding empire was to create vassal kings out of existing monarchs. So, for example, the Spanish colonizer Cortes wanted to make the Aztec king or emperor a vassal of Cortez's prince, Charles V. Similarly, in the St. Lawrence Valley, French explorers um, are tempted to make the uh, indigenous leaders of the villages up and down the St. Lawrence Valley between Quebec and Montreal, between what are now Quebec and Montreal, um, vassals of the French king, Francis I. Um, in Virginia, uh, the Jamestown settlers also wanted to make the local indigenous leader, Powhatan, a vassal of uh, their king, um, James I. So, um, uh, so this was a, was a common reflex to understand First Nations as monarchies and their leaders as kings. Um, one of the problems with this classification was that um, it didn't correspond very well with the reality of indigenous politics throughout much of the Americas. Um, there certainly were leaders, but there were often multiple leaders. Um, uh, many, in many of these societies, leaders were not um, uh, sort of born into that role. They, they uh, uh, acquired that position through a combination of uh, persuasion, um, uh, good oratory, uh, setting a good example. Um, they, weren't, um, they weren't really monarchs, um, and, and leadership tended to be somewhat decentralized. Um, and certainly the sons uh, or children of these leaders did not automatically succeed to their parents. So, um, so in practice, the, uh, the classification of First Nations as monarchies and their leaders as kings by Europeans, it, it created a, a superficial rapport. It allowed for a superficial rapport, but um, in some ways it also undermined um, good relations, um, especially when uh, Europeans tried to meddle in uh, monarchical politics.